In the near future, where technology has advanced so much that age can be reversed, a biotech company has developed a way for people to donate their years of life to anyone whose DNA is compatible with theirs. And in exchange for their time, people are paid a lot of money as compensation. The technology rapidly speeds up the aging of the donor, but has the reverse effect on the recipient. With the headquarter in Berlin, the technology coupled with donation managers has propelled Eon to be a billion dollar company company with ever-increasing demand. Max Thoma is a donation manager of Eon with a successful record of brokering donations. He truly believes that Eon is a good company and offers a chance at a better life for the poor. He travels to attend a special event prepared at Eon, and on the event, Max is named Employee of the Year. On that same event, Sophie, the founder and CEO of Eon, makes a speech planning to furthermore expand her research. She even declares at the event that her research would go as far as controlling aging and death. Creating curiosity about the lives of great scientists of the past, she announces that her company will include the Nobel Prizes of the past and future in the list of recipients, and as a result, 15 scientists have already received their donations. While all of this was going on, somewhere in the building, while the scientists were continuing their recovery, an undercover spy that works for an organization called the Atom Group executes the 15 scientists. The Atom Group believes that the time donation breaks the principle of equality, profiting on the rich at the expense of the desperate poor people. Through their leader Lilith, the group publicly takes responsibility for the attack and declares that anyone who is a recipient of time will be hunted down and executed. Sophie was angry with what happened and wants an explanation as to how it happened. Nork, the newly assigned head of operations in Berlin, explains how the spy infiltrated the company and offered to start a background check on all the employees. Kaya, a trusted leader of the security team, responds to the offer saying all the necessary arrangements have been made. Wait, hold on. Did you subscribe to our channel? Come on guys, you're here, you're watching the video. Help us out by hitting the subscribe button as it really helps out me and my team to make more videos for you guys. And now, let's get back to the recap. Meanwhile, when we go back to Max, he seems to have an easy life. He's got a beautiful wife, a successful career, and a luxurious apartment. His wife Elena works at a hospital in Berlin and they're trying to get pregnant. But despite his successful career, he is still in debt with an unpaid mortgage. After returning home from visiting Elena's parents, both Max and Elena are met with unforeseen tragedy as their house was destroyed by a fire. To make matters worse, their insurance company refuses to bail them out because they believe that the fire was caused by negligence. It is revealed that Elena, without the knowledge of Max, has put down her name as collateral. The bank that loaned them the money required the full value of the house and Elena is sentenced to pay 40 years from her life. Max offers to donate time to help but he is told that his matching recipient has recently passed away. As they were walking to Max's car, Elena is then arrested with a suspicion that she might flee the country. Max, now in a desperate situation, asks a loan from Sophie herself. She says that she'll look into it as she is in a bind herself and she's facing a lot of pressure from the board because of her spending on research and philanthropy. She tries to explain that the process still needs to resolve the issue of DNA compatibility but the board members still remain convinced. Despite his efforts to save his wife, Max fails to come up with a solution as the help never arrived from Sophie and Elena forcibly donates 40 years of her life. Max takes his wife to a motel and Elena is devastated and broken from the process. She looks at herself in the mirror and sees the physical effect on full display. Max receives some news from Eon and he's promoted to senior donation manager, a position with a lot of benefits. As this made no sense to him after what happened, he goes to confront Sophie, and she simply just stares at him and gets in her car as he realizes that Sophie herself was the recipient of his wife's 40 years. And after a lot of painful days, Elena was sick and Max takes her to the hospital only to discover that she was pregnant and had a miscarriage when her donation took place. Elena, who now has given up on everything, breaks up with Max and tells him to continue to live without her. And she goes to her parents to live out the remainder of her days. After all of this, Max was now alone and we see him sitting at a park, and he is met with an opportunity to get back the years of his wife. He makes an appointment with an illegal clinic who processes the same donation technology. He 
prepares fake documents, an ID for himself and his wife, and now what he only needs to do is to get a matching donor for his wife. He starts to follow Sophie, waiting for an opportunity to kidnap her. He follows her car to a cemetery and kidnaps her with an electric taser, and he then marks a headstone with a symbol of the Atom Group. Elena has resumed her life and works in the hospital, and then all of a sudden she's met by Max, who takes her to a secure location. He explains everything and tries to convince her to come with him, and Elena initially hesitates, telling him that both their lives will be ruined, but later agrees to his idea, and they both leave before Sophie's security team tracks and finds them. Kaya and Nowak strike an interesting conversation while the security team was now tracking with the latest tracking software available. Nowak questions her loyalty to Sophie, and she tells Nowak that she's been working for Sophie for about 30 years, and she herself is the recipient of time, while Nowak simply explains that everything he does just comes down to money. Meanwhile, Max and Elena, along with their kidnapped donor, were on their way to Lithuania on a ferry, where the operation is scheduled to happen. Noak spots Max and Elena from a selfie posted on social media from one of the travelers. He informs the team and an alarm sounds from the port of Lithuania. Max improvises and comes up with a plan to kidnap one of the families traveling and hides in their car. And because of this, they manage to pass the security at the border. Max and Elena make a stop on their way, and their kidnapped donor reveals herself to be Marie, the daughter of Sophie. She tries to tell them that she's kept out of the public for this reason, and her resemblance is due to the donation that her mother received. Max, refusing to believe that he kidnapped the wrong person, tapes her mouth, binds her hands, and puts her in the car. But Elena starts to doubt the whole thing, as Max couldn't be definitely sure. They then reach an abandoned hotel and stay there until a call from his contact comes with a location that was valid for only six hours. Marie, now sitting on a couch, tells both Elena and Max that she's against what her mother is doing and that they're not the first victims in time donation. Refugees and children sold by their parents are all falling victims to illegal donation clinics benefiting celebrities and other popular people on the cheap. But Max, not really believing what she was saying, tries to tape her mouth again, and Elena stops him. Elena and Max then have an argument, and Max tells her that even if Marie's right, they should still go through with the process, and maybe Marie will get her years back from her mom. He disappoints Elena, saying that Marie's gonna get to be a mom instead of her, and she goes away telling him that he's changed. Marie asks Max to take her to the showers, and she begins telling him about how Eon started because of her deceased sister Lucy. She tells him that her mom made groundbreaking discoveries on cell aging, but couldn't save her sister because a match was not found in time. Max starts to search the story on Lucy, and seeing that he was distracted, Marie hits Max with a loose handle, and she flees to the forest nearby. Marie couldn't go far on foot, and she falls into a swamp and starts to drown. But Elena was there to rescue her from drowning, and she tells Max that she still thinks that Marie is not Sophie, and that she's afraid that they got the wrong person. Max then continues to console Elena, and they spend the night together. And meanwhile, Kaya and Nowak have located Max and Elena by tracking their burner phone. It is seen that further reinforcements were coming, even though Nowak was against the idea of having too many forces just for two fugitives. Meanwhile, back at the hotel, Max and Elena are suddenly awakened and captured by the Atom Group. They hold them at gunpoint and take them away to a secret location. Lilith, who had a plan for all of them, begins to reveal the truth about Sophie, Max, and Elena. Sophie already knew back then that Elena was the only possible match for her donation, and Max was supposed to be just a donation manager to Elena. But they fell in love and got married, destroying the chance for Sophie to receive the time that she very much so wanted. So Sophie was the one who orchestrated the entire plan, including the bank that refused the loans, until Elena Elena had put her name as collateral. She was also responsible for the apartment that was destroyed by the fire, and she also had Max's recipient killed to prevent him from donating some years, as she wanted to be the one to receive the years from his wife. After telling them all of this, Lilith tells Sam that she's going to use them as bait to lure Sophie into a trap and capture her alive. Max had no chance but to comply with Lilith's demand, as her team was holding Elena and Marie hostage. Kaya and Noak, along with a lot of armed men reached the place where Marie, Max, and Elena were held captive by the Atom Group. 
Max demands that he must speak with Sophie, and he tells them that the only way he would let Marie go is if Sophie comes inside with him. All seemed to be well on the way until Kaya asked how he knew Sophie would accompany them, and he didn't really know what to say, and she realizes that it was a trap. And it turns out that Nowak worked for the Adam Group all along. He shoots Sophie in the back, as it was a second part of the plan that if the Adam Group couldn't get Sophie alive, then they would end up killing her. Kaya immediately shoots Nowak, and bullets were flying everywhere. Sophie's team eventually defeats the Adam Group, killing Lilith in the process, and meanwhile, Max and Elena manage to escape the fight, also capturing Marie in the process. Max, filled with a guilty conscience, asks Elena, who was driving, not to punish Marie for her mother's mistakes. But Elena, after hearing all of what Lilith had to say, has decided to make the family pay for what they did to her and her child. Max tells her that he can't continue like this, and suddenly, Elena takes a knife out and threatens to kill herself unless Max gets out of the car. Scared by what his wife was about to do, he complies and she drives off without him. She arrives at the illegal clinic and performs the procedure and takes the 40 years back from Marie. After finishing the process, she sees all the illegal work that the clinic was performing on immigrants and children, and she decides to leave the place as fast as she can. Max reaches a refugee camp, and Marie is then found walking alone on the road. And apparently, after all of this madness, Sophie was alive and well. Apparently, she wore a bulletproof jacket, and Kaya quits her job as the security leader for Eon. Marie rapidly ages and asks her mom for help, but Sophie refuses to donate the 40 years to her daughter, and Marie is left to face the consequences of this ordeal. After some time had passed, Max sees Elena pregnant and kissing another man. As the movie was ending, it shows Max leaving with members of the Adam Group, meaning that he's joined the fight against time donation at Eon, as he's now realized the danger of the technology. I hope you guys enjoyed the recap, make sure to leave me a like, leave a comment, also subscribe to my channel, I love you guys so much and I promise to see you on my next recap, bye!